thank you for coming to our furlough briefing. Uh, we will have a few words from our A6 Airplane representative, Mr. Stewart, and then we'll do some time and start the briefing. If you have any questions, please ask them as the briefing goes on. If you have personal questions that you don't want to share with the group, we'll be down here afterwards. You can come see us or you can make an appointment with us and we can answer your questions at that time. So, Mr. Stewart, you can ask First of all, thanks very much for coming. Uh, hopefully we'll give you some information that you can actually take back and use. Uh, I think we are, all, all of us civilians have finally figured out that they're, this time they probably are serious. Uh, 11 days or less is what the Secretary of Defense has said. This doesn't have anything to do with the lack of civilian contributions to the, the war fight. This is purely budgetary. And there just is no other way, at least as far as the Department of Defense is concerned, to do this other than the of civilians. Unfortunately, the five billion dollars that they will save is just not available in the budget anyplace else. That doesn't mean that 11 days is a hard and fast answer. There may be adjustments between now and the 30th of September. I have no idea. But we all need a plan for 11 days. So. Please listen to what uh, Christine and Maggie have to, uh, to offer. To try to give you the rules of the road so that uh, we're all doing it the same way, know what's expected, and, and don't get ourselves in trouble. Other than that, again, thank you. I, I wish we didn't have to have this meeting, but I'd rather you have the information and something down the road change than not have the meeting and everybody trying to figure out what's going on when it doesn't occur. So, thanks again. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, good. I have to get right up here in this mic. Um, you, some of you may have come back in March or April when we did similar type of town hall and we talked a little bit about furlough. We also added some other stuff into that briefing. We will not be doing this today. It's just furlough. Okay. Some of the stuff that we're going to talk about is the same and some of it is new. So. Again, as Ms. Murray said, if you have any questions as I go through the briefing, just raise your hand. We have uh, traveling mics that will come around unless you just don't want one. Here's our overview, what we're going to talk about. You'll notice it's very similar to what we had before. We're going to go very in-depth into the rules of engagement. We want to make sure that you and your supervisor stays out of trouble. What is a furlough? A furlough is the placement of an employee into a non-pay, non-duty status. There's two different types of furlough. You have an administrative furlough, which is what we're going into, and then you have a shutdown furlough or emergency furlough. The difference between the two is an administrative furlough is a planned event. So we will be giving you, I know you, sometimes you'll see the language generally giving 30 days notice. We will give you 30 days notice. The notices are being processed. We anticipate that they will start going out. Some have gone out today. We'll get a few more out this afternoon. We'll get more out tomorrow. So. You'll be called in. I'm not sure every organization is doing it just a little bit different, but we will send them to the commanders, and the commanders will make the determination how they are going to send them out. Where, how did we get here? The Budget Control Act of 2011 mandated certain budget cuts. And in addition to that, they formed a super committee, and the super committee was supposed, it was made up of Republicans and Democrats. They were supposed to come up with a budget. Well, that did not happen. So it kind of, the sequestration that we went into in March 1st was never supposed to happen, but it did. So here we are. Originally we were 22 days, then we were 14 days, and now we are 11 days. And as Mr. Stewart said, it is possible if they find more funding that they could reduce it, but at this time we do not know that that will happen. There are a few exceptions. And as you can see up here, we have our non-appropriated fund employees and our FMS or foreign military sales employees. The reason that they are exempt is by furloughing them, it will not save us money because they are not paid out of appropriated funds. Foreign nationals are also exempt. With all the legal maneuvering that would have to be done to furlough a foreign national, it was determined not worth the effort. So, and I know that really kind of doesn't make a lot of people happy. But by the time we could get everything done, the furlough period would be over. We also have a few that were de designated as accepted. Your civilians deployed to a combat zone. So if you are 
preparing to deploy, you need to make sure that you come by the civilian personnel office so that we can get you to, um, annotated correctly. Certain security firefighters and whatnot, you'll see that we have a zero behind that. Be we have enough of our non-US employees that can cover that, so all employees within security forces as far as civilians go will be furloughed. Um, employees with direct child care. These are the employees who actually take care of the kids, whether it be in the room doing the, cl the, tr the, the teaching or the cooks, direct care. So if, if they don't have direct care, they will be furloughed. And then again, it also says limited medical personnel. We do not have an emergency room here at Ramstein, as you know, so therefore we do not have medical personnel that will be exempt. This is the timeline. So on 14 May, Secretary Hagel announced its decision to furlough for 11 days. And we have been in, in our office just really working hard to try to get things in motion and prepared for this week. So the letters started going out. We started creating them yesterday. And we will be sending them out up through 5 June. That is the last date that we have to get the letters to the employees. If you have not received a letter, <laughs> don't jump for joy, but might want to give us a call and uh, find out if we sent it out. From, from 29 May until 6 June, it makes it sound like a really long period, but basically each employee, depending on when you get your notice, you have a seven-day reply period. That means that you can go to whoever the designated rep, rep, excuse me, reconsideration officer is or to the deci deciding official, and we'll kind of talk a little bit more about that. And plead your case, basically. Yes? You should get your notice before you go on leave. What, what squadron are you with, if you don't mind? Uh, aerospace medicine. Okay. Yeah, I've got those actually ready. So I'm, I just need to walk over to the clinic. Um, but you get a seven-day employee reply period. And during that reply period, it is your right to come back and argue why you feel that you should not be furloughed. Okay? Don't think that there's nothing that can be done. Plead your case. If you don't make any comment at all, then at the end of seven days, it will be considered that you had no comment to make. I saw your hand right here. What will happen, um, you will likely get another, you can give them your letter when you get there and let them know that you were already notified through here. Where are you, so you are the sponsor. Okay. What I would recommend is maybe come by our office and let us give a call to the civilian personnel flight where you're going to, and we'll ask that question for you. But it, it, regardless of whether you get it here or you get it there, you get a 30-day notice. Correct. Yes. You know, it's, it's across the Air Force. The rules of engagement are exactly the same. So that means that if you fall into one of those exempt categories when you get to the state side, then, right, but you will at least have been notified. And it's better to have at least a notification in case that is not the case. You're welcome. So once the replies are all received, the deciding official, what her, his or her job is to do is to review them. And I can't tell you I really cannot tell you up here that they will make any changes to the 11 days. Um, I think it's going to depend on what you say. It's not likely that they will be able to, but what will happen is if they get a reply before they can make a decision, they have to contact our local JA and discuss that decision with the legal <laughs> experts. So that's why I said, you know, go ahead and make your replies if you wish. Um, and when you get your notice, you will be asked to sign it. This does not mean that you agree with it. It just means you acknowledge it. Yes? So if you know the notices, will they be sent out via mail or will they be sent via email? Well, what we're trying to do is we're packaging up, and we are going to go to the organizations that we can. If it's an organization that we can't go to because it's, you know, geographically separated, then they will be emailed. Now, that does bring up a good question. If an employee is on leave, and they're not here to get their notice, what can be done is it can be emailed to the employee 
The employee do, that gives a read receipt that they got it. However, they still have to sign the notification. If they are in a place where they cannot get the mail, it has to be mail certified to get a res, uh, the signature response back. And again, we have to have the employee sign the letter. Once we get all the deciding officials, they've made their decisions, then AFPC will input the information into the defense, well, DCPDS. Um, it's our personnel system where we keep track of all of the actions that are input for you. The furlough period cannot begin before 8 July. That does not mean that everyone will be furloughed that first week because if you look at the calendar, it actually looks like there's 12 days between 8 July and 30 September. The furlough period is 11 days or less. If the, if the Secretary of Defense comes back and says we're going to reduce it, then there's the or less. So, but the furlough, the very earliest furlough date is 8 July. The latest is 30 September. Okay. As new employees come in, I, that last bullet on there, we will give them notice depending on when they come in because, again, every employee <laughs> will get 30 days notice. Designation of furlough days. Air Force implemented this furlough as discontinuous, and what that means is it cannot be 11 days in a row. It has to be one day per week, two days per pay period. So, and in there, in there's any extreme um, circumstances <coughs> where you cannot be furloughed on the first week, perhaps there's something they can do to help you out with the next week, but they cannot be two consecutive days. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. Any questions on that? When you say two consecutive days, does that mean you can't be uh, furloughed on a Monday and a Friday? No, that does not mean that because that's two separate weeks. <coughs> so you could. Correct, because it's two separate weeks. That's not exactly correct. Remember that the employee does not get to select the furlough days. The supervisor does. According, according, according to the uh, that document that is that is identified in that uh, guide from OPM in the uh, Federal Labor Labor Relations Authority, it says that an employee has the right to determine that. And only to be discontinued or not allowed if there's a work reason that they can't. Okay, and that would be the mission. Mission, correct. correct. That's why the supervisor gets to decide whether they've got more to do on Friday. Right. So, but if, but if, if it's not mission related, then they can be done. Can be a Friday in the morning. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. Okay. You know, is that you you you, you, you are you are requesting the supervisor decides. Okay, and he says I cannot afford it for Mondays and Fridays. That's the answer. Then you'll go back and try to negotiate something else. Does that make sense? And I would also caution you on in September on Labor Day weekend, if you were furloughed on Friday and on Tuesday, you would not receive holiday pay for that holiday. Okay? Um, the reason that they did it discontinuous was to help mitigate the financial burden by the employee. If you do it a complete pay period, eleven days in a row, then you would not get a paycheck that pay period. Okay. Um, it is no more than 88 hours, so it's eight hours in one week, so or one pay day or one work day. Now, if you are in a firefighter or if you work in a longer period of time, then you need to come by our office and we will let you know what your furlough is, <coughs> because it's not going to be your entire duty day if you work 12 hours a day. Okay. Excuse me. Yes. Ma'am, on the one day per week, is that? I mean, is, is, there a, is it set to one day, or will the supervisor and the employee be able to, even if it was two day, two hours a day for every day? Yeah, Air Force has recommended that we not do that because of the inherent danger that you say, I'm going to work six hours today, something comes up at the very last second, and you wind up staying however long, <laughs> you have violated the, the Anti-Deficiency Act. So we're definitely not recommending that you do a partial day.
Okay, as I said earlier, the employees will be provided at least a 30-day notice. There are certain rules that we have to go by when we do anything like this. This is considered an adverse action. So we have to go by the Code of Federal Regulations and our regulations, AFI 36-704. Um, two work days or 16 hours. So that's why I said if you're a firefighter, you need to come see us so that we can help calculate what your um, furlough hours would be. The furlough period is from 8 July to 30 September. And you cannot substitute any type of paid leave for your furlough day. OK, here's where it gets very, very strict. The rules of engagement. You may not, on your furlough day, perform any government work, either on a BlackBerry, a government-issued laptop, on your personal email. Any type of government work is forbidden. The Anti-Deficiency Act, what it means is that we have furloughed you. You cannot work more than 64 hours in a pay period. And if you do volunteer work or if you're working from home, telework, whatever, then you must be compensated for that. And the Air Force has said, no way can you do that. Compulsory reporting, formal investigation, identification of responsible parties. They're going to investigate to find out who authorized it? Did you do it on your own? Was it willful? And in some cases, it could result in criminal prosecution. I don't say this to scare you. I just want to make sure that you understand it is very serious. And they are very serious that you will not do this. The employee and the supervisor would be held responsible if an employee works past their eight hours. So if your shift is 7.30 to 4.30, you may not turn on your computer before 7.30, and you must have it off by 4.30. No. There's no wiggle room there. And both parties could be disciplined if it were to happen. Understood. But the rule of thumb is if you, you are allowed to take leave, then you can be furloughed for that one day. I understand, but what if something came up that they had to call? Them? They cannot call you on your furlough day. Simple, Simple as that. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is they cannot contact you at home on your furlough day. Now, say, for example, your furlough day is Wednesday. And on Tuesday, you find out you've got a really big project that you need to do on Wednesday. Your supervisor or your manager can come to you and say, OK, I need to change your furlough day to Thursday because I need this done. He has to communicate that to you prior to your furlough day. They cannot do it once you're at home on that furlough day. It cannot be changed. I thought I saw a hand up in the back. Yes? So if, if you had that mission thing and say it was a Friday, is it possible to take two furlough days the following week as long as they're not consecutive? Up for it? It, it could be. But you have to be very careful with that because if, if you're not able to take two the next week, you see what I'm saying? So they have to be very rare situations where that would happen. Um, if you are already on a position where you earn premium pay, for example, your regular tour of duty as you work Sunday, that won't stop. Okay, So we're not going to take that away. And I, I don't want to confuse the two terms, but furlough is very much like leave without pay when it comes to certain benefits. Um, if you go out to this website, it will give you more information on the benefits. Also, if you go out to the OPM website, there's a lot of information there. Or you can call Benefits and Entitlements at Randolph and get more information from them. And these slides, by the way, are out on the Ramstein um, civilian, human, yeah, civilian homepage. Not the SharePoint, but the actual AF.mil. Yes, sir? That, that's exactly what I was asking. Where are these slides yeah. located? So what do you call it? Civilian. If you just go to Ramstein.af.mil and then look for the uh, civilian personnel, and then we have a button that's just labeled furlough. Benefits. Your TSP. If you contribute to your TSP by a certain percentage amount, then that percentage is going to be dictated by how much you bring home. So if you're giving 5%, whatever your, your pay is for that pay period, that's all that's going to be contributed. If you 
normally do 5% and say it comes out to $150 and you want to continue to donate or to contribute $150, then it would be best if you go out to the TSP website and change your contribution to a dollar figure because then I can guarantee you that the 150 will go out as long as you have sufficient pay. LQA and post allowance, I know this is probably one of the biggest questions that we get. Because it is a discontinuous furlough, it's only one day a week, your LQA and your post allowance will not be affected. You will still get for the full 14 days. Retirement calculations are based on your take-home pay. So if you want to know what your, your estimations are going to be, you can contact VEST for that as well. There's also a, 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 a furlough calculator out on our website as well that will help you to determine what your, your pay is going to be. There is no change to your high three for retirement purposes. And your first contributions will be impacted based on how much you are bringing home. FEHB, as long as you have enough in your paycheck to pay the premium, then the premiums will continue to go out. If there is insufficient, then it will pick it up as soon as there is sufficient funding. In Fegley, you will be in Fegley up to 12 months in a non-pay status, so being that it's only one day a week, there will be no effect on your Fegley. Leave accrual. Because it is an 88 hours discontinuous, what you can expect is an the beginning of September for that first pay period, after 80 hours in an unpaid status, you will not earn any annual or sick leave for that pay period. <coughs> if you are on leave without pay, say for example if you are a military or civilian spouse following your sponsor back to the States and you go on leave without pay and you're in leave without pay for over 88 hours, that could be counted towards your furlough time. Um, when you talk about leave without pay under FMLA, if you are, say, if, does everyone hopefully knows what FMLA means, it's Family Medical Leave Act. If you had a medical condition that you needed to take that time, you can take it as leave without pay. One of those days during the week would be designated as a furlough day. You would not lose any of your entitlement to further days under FMLA. So you get 12 days per year, you would still have whatever was remaining. 64 hours per pay period must be annotated unless you're in a leave status. You log your furlough hours with the code KE. Credit hours. Previously, when we had the briefing back in April, we told you that you could not earn time, um, overtime, comp time, or credit hours. That has changed. You still cannot earn um, overtime or comp time you may, however, with advance, and again, in very rare circumstances, earn credit hours. They must be approved in advance. They must be documented as they are today. Here's the caveat. You must use those earned credit hours in the pay period in which they were earned. So, for example, if Friday on the very first week of the pay period, you earn two hours of credit time, that's fine, but you must use them in the following week and you may not earn them on the Friday of the last day of the pay period. Does that make sense to everyone? I want to make sure before we move on. So you, you would still end up putting the credit hours on your time sheet? Yes. And then you just balance out to 864 hours? Correct. Correct. So they have to be taken during the same pay period in which they were earned. I saw another hand. Yes. How does that affect the credit hours that you currently have? Will have no effect on them. Yes. Yes. You can still take leave. If you had a week of leave planned, you could still take that annual leave or the credit hours if you had them. It's just one of those days would be designated as a furlough day. Wiggy impact. Because this is going to be a discontinuous, you should not see any effect on your within grade increase. However, if you are coming up for one, you might want to just come over to our office and double check to see if there's going to be any impact. But I, basically it's after six months, if you're in a non-paid status, then it would affect it, but you won't be in a non-paid for that long. Resources. The Airmen and Family Readiness is available to you for financial counseling, 
um, and possibly assistance. They've given a few little seminars over the uh, last month or so, and we anticipate that they may do that again. Um, there are limited services provided by the Federal Employee Education and Assistance, and again, limited services provided by Air Force Assistance Fund for military and retired military and their spouses. Key phone numbers if you want to contact any of these organizations for assistance. And also, in 2011, when we were facing the emergency shutdown furloughs, the credit unions and banks here on base, and I, I believe in other parts of the country as well, were offering short-term loans to help get through the difficult period. So you might want to check with your financial institution if you need that resource and see if they are providing that. Again, on our civilian personnel website, You'll find all the questions and answers from Air Force. We've got OPM guidance out there, a lot of the information that we've received from Secretary of Defense, um, and again, that furlough estimation calculator. Air Force A1PC and MyPERS. If you have a MyPERS account, you can go out and get guidance from there, and that is also where the administrative record and what that is Every document that has been issued, all the memorandums that have been issued from the Secretary of Defense, Air Force, et cetera, are on that website. You as an employee have a right to know how we got here. So you can go out and you can read that administrative record <coughs> because I'm telling you that uh, the proposing officials have to read it, the deciding officials have to read it. It is good information to have. And of course, OPM has a lot of really good information. They have a guide for uh, administrative furlough. It will tell you everything you want to know about benefits, leave, et cetera. You can contact us at Civilian Personnel. Our customer service is 480-7054. If you'd like to come in, make an appointment to talk to us if you have any questions, or if you just want to come and ask questions that you do not wish to ask here. We will continue to update the personnel website as we gather more information. So if you check that periodically throughout the furlough. If in the event they do shorten the furlough period, you will be probably the third or fourth to know. <laughs> Questions? I saw you. Yes. I have another question about the holidays. Just to be clear, if you take your furlough day in conjunction with a holiday, right? If like say 4th of July weekend's coming up, Thursday's the holiday, Friday, Well, you couldn't take that Friday as a furlough day anyway because we don't start until the 8th. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> but for Labor Day, day yeah. If you are furloughed on the Friday before Labor <coughs> Day, and then you are furloughed, and, the key word is and, furloughed on Tuesday after Labor Day, you would not receive the holiday pay. So it has to be in between. Right. Okay. But where is that written? Where is that written? Yeah. It is in the AFI. Okay. Yes. Well, it would, you would still use the same code for the holiday, but it's going to calculate it when it sees you're in a non-paid status on the day before and the day after. It just won't give you the holiday pay. Well, the, system the system will do that. Okay, the second question I have is, are there, uh, on your website, on the Civilian Pay website, is there a presentation or a step-by-step -step on, on uh, how to do it in ATAPS itself? We do not, um, however, I'm sure we could do some <coughs> form of screenshots for that, but civilian pay would likely have some sort of uh, presentation on that. But we can check into that and see what we can put out there. Yeah, I appreciate that because my boss is a comptroller and he's already telling me to make presentations for the <laughs> stuff we put out for all the ATAPS folks. Yeah. I also made a date that you say to Okay. Um, last question on that is, uh, what about uh, furlough and FY14? I'm not going to say it's not a possibility, but they are not looking that far ahead at this time. Right now what they want to do is get through FY13 and we'll see what happens when we get to FY14. So that discussion, to, in, in my mind, is not even taking place at this time. Any other questions? Yes. 
Possibly. Possibly. <coughs> That's a good question. <laughs> we haven't had that one come up before. Pardon me? What did she ask? Would the civilian fitness program be impacted by the furlough? So we'll have to look into that one. You can research that when you get back to the office. <laughs> this, is, this is my employee management relations person. She's always causing trouble. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir. It is flexible, but it needs to be only in very rare circumstances. Air Force has said it would be one day per week. So it, and I would definitely think that it would have to be approved at a much higher level than just at the, the local unit level. Mr. Stewart? The 64 hours per pay period, which is 8-hour days, that is saying so. How it's done is a little squishy as to work with supervisors. But it would be very difficult to, do, to string any of these together in a, in a separate pay period, not have them abut each other at some point, in which case you have broken the DOD directly to Does that make sense? So, for 99.9% 90, .9 of the people that will be on a furlough, the goal is one a week, and in rare exceptions, 16 hours in a pay period. The idea being it be a day, regardless of what you're day is a, a two days per paper. There, there may be really, really like I said, odd circumstances where you have to do something different, but the look, this will not be a one. It will probably be at the Corps Air Force. So it's got to be really, really weird. Make sense? I did want to add one thing. Uh, if anyone has children in school in the CDCs, um, there's going to the Child Development Center is going to have a four-day plan. We're going to send letters out to parents about a week after we send our letters out. So if anyone's got children in school, just contact the Child Development Center, and they will tell you what the four-day plan is going to be. Also, the Airman Family Readiness Center is doing uh, frugal for furlough classes. They're having lunchtime classes. So we want to learn tips and uh, ways of cleaning with natural supplies, financing, saving money, things like that. We're offering those type of classes to everybody at lunchtime. So please contact the Airman Family Readiness if you have questions on those classes and the Child Development Center, their questions on the 40th Yes, in the back. Um, so, the, um, you said that it could be two days in a week, as long, maybe, um, in certain cases, right? Or as long as it's two days in a pay period. But can, can it ever be two days in a row? No. Okay. So then it would, as Mr. Stewart said, that that would violate the, the the statement that they made that it has to be discontinuous. Okay. Um, I have another question. On the TSP, if you're doing that for 5%, that's going to be on the TSP um, and, you know, usually there's matching that goes with that as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of people pick 5. Um, if, if you leave that 5, if your 5% was $150 and now you go back and change it to a dollar amount, 150 you're still only going to get matched at your new 5%. No, you would get matched at the 150 if you change it to the dollar amount. Okay, so it's not. No, because they, 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 they match at a percent. Yeah. So, okay. so if you set a dollar amount of 150 dollars, and that's not five, and that's not five percent, they're not going to match 150. I, so I well, no, understand. I'm using the dollar figure as an example. Understand. Okay, so don't don't hold that one in stone. It's whatever your contributions are. Figure out what your percentage is, and if that's something that you want it to continue, then you would change it to that dollar amount. Does that make sense? Right. If you don't change it to a dollar amount. Yes. Yes. That won't change. Yes. I don't know what happened. Oh, okay. I saw somebody's hand over here. Yes. 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 If you if you have a week of leave, four days will be leave, one day will be furlough. So you could 
could take four weeks to leave, no problem. You just would have your fertile day sandwiched in. Uh, One day a week. One day a week. Yeah. All right, what about a, a TDY status? Would there be any restrictions? <laughs> yes, if, well, first of all, TDYs, again, should be the exception, not the rule. Um, but if you were TDY, one day would be a furlough day. So if you're in a class, then that one day you would not be able to go into the class. You would stay in your hotel room, go sightseeing, whatever. But you would be furloughed one day. Well, there, is, there is an exception. If you're on a TDY, if you leave on Sunday, if you leave, if it goes Monday through Friday, you can move your furlough day to the following week so you don't disrupt the training. Long-term training, you will have to take furlough days during training. So it just depends on the duration of the training. And that's one of those scenarios we were talking about that would be kind of rare. Yes? Okay. Uh, so when we're at home, uh, not working on our computers and our work is stacking up behind us, and then uh, we're supposed to come back to work and we can't earn a comp time. So what expectation management is happening on, happening on the other side to let management know that they that is exactly what they should expect. Uh, that should be up at the, uh, in you safety level, for you, for your directorate. They should just, CV should be pushing something out on that. But yes, I mean, you're not expected to come back in and try to get everything that you missed on that furlough day completed on the next day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that they have that expectation because we've been talking about this for a very long time. I, so, but, huh? <laughs> okay. Obviously, if you can take leave, your supervisor knows that there is times where you're not going to be doing work and they have to transfer the workload. No different. Workload must be transferred. Period. That is, that is the intent of the furlough. And why you cannot do work is to put, for instance, a, I'm going to forward all emails from you say me fill in the blank to my coworker. If you're in a one deep, that makes it your manager responsible. Sorry, that's the way it works. Yeah, if you were, if you got sick and were sick and were out for six months, that's somebody would pick it up. That's that's great in an ideal world. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, could you say anything about uh, losing your uh, holiday pay? Yeah, I, don't, I know there's only one holiday that's going to affect the labor day. Right. I don't know exactly which day that falls on, but you said. It's always on a Monday. Okay. So if you are in a furlough status on the Friday before the holiday and on the Tuesday after the holiday, then you would not be paid for that holiday. If you, you must be in a paid status on either side of it. So if you're working on Friday and furloughed on Tuesday, you're good. You will get the holiday pay. Are you on leave on Tuesday? Because if you're on leave, then you're in a paid status, correct? So then you would get the holiday. It, the, the kick is, is it has to be an unpaid status on, e, on both sides, not either side, both sides. Yes? The travel comp time that will continue. Yes, because the expectation is if you're go if we're sending you to a class, the expectation is that you will be rested when Monday morning comes. We don't want you falling asleep in the class, so that's going to continue. But again, I mean TDYs should be something that they're looking at very closely and only doing those ones that are mission critical. Yes. Well, yes, because you're in a non-paid status. Anything else? Yes. Then what I would recommend, you're up at USAFE or? OK. You can call us, and then we'll, we'll get Mr. Stewart. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yes, sir. We've been told, ma'am, that when you're TDY, you're per diem and M and IE continue. What you don't get is your pay. 
But your TY benefits, like your per diem, you do get that on TY status for that one day you're in front of Okay, thank you. That was in one of the presentations earlier. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, you know, every, every organization is different. Um, with, our, with our squadron, the commander delegated it down to the flight chiefs, but every organization is gonna make their own determination. So within director of staff, your supervisor would likely be the one that would establish the schedule. Yes. continue to do your mission on your own time or however you do it, you know, outside of the box, that's going to affect us in the future. Has anyone thought about that at all? Absolutely. You know, and I, I just suggest, and that's a suggestion from me, that if you're not supposed to be working, if you're not getting paid for it, do what you can do, because I'm in six different accounts in, for the command, six different ones, and I've already told my boss. Can't do that. And they accept that, but if it's not notified, I mean that's how we talk to uh, DOD. You know, it's the only way we can do it. Any other questions? Yes, I see hand back there. Um, as the, the two days in a row or the two days in a week, what level do you have to get approval of that for if you wanted to try? If you were a special situation or wanted that? Well, as Mr. Stewart said earlier, it would probably be Air Force. Air Force level? Okay. Yes. What, what is the uh, schedule for the CTO in Europe? Is, that, is everybody taking care of the same thing? No. Spread We're going to spread it out. Um, one, of the, one of the staffing chiefs or the CPO will always be there. And then we're looking at our employees and making sure that, like, for example, I have four U.S. employees that work for me. I'll have two on one day or, or spread them out through the week so that we don't just stop functioning. But I do know of some, some organizations that are going to do every Friday. So, yes? I don't know if you can forecast this or not, but we have enough problems getting recruit applications processed at AFPC, which is a completely civilian organization. What's the impact going to be, or what do they forecast the impact going to be to getting recruits done now they're going to be gone from work two days to pay for it? Well, <laughs> I, I, you know, I can't.